On this Tuesday, we remind you that if the county commissioners had any lingering doubts about how residents of the 5th District feel about the proposed coal ash landfill at Westburn, they were put to rest at last night's workshop. An overflow crowd of more than 125 people expressed their fears for what the landfill could do to their community and the county as a whole. Jim Bolton was the first resident to speak to the commission reminding them about the damage caused by the fly ash spill at Kingston. The fact that the mountains where the proposed landfill would be located is honeycombed with old mines and that many people rely on drinking water from wells that could be affected. Jennifer Hallman lives in Demery but emphasized that everyone will be impacted in one way or another if the landfill is allowed. Hoffman pointed out that the amount of ash that the land company proposes to bring in would bury 281 football fields to a depth of 100 feet. Hoffman brought about to commissioners that in 2000 a fly ash dump in Martin, Kentucky collapsed into an old underground mine, filled the mine tunnels with waste, and poured out all of the mine openings into the streams and communities. Each speaker's comments were accompanied by loud applause from the audience. The one missing factor at this workshop was a representative from Ketchum Land Company and Davis Creek Energy. Unlike previous commission meetings, a company spokesman was nowhere to be seen last night. Commissioner Sue Nance added her name to Marie Ayers in requesting the Jackson Law be placed on the agenda for next Monday's regular meeting. Last month, commissioners fell one vote short of the two-thirds majority required to give local government primary responsibility for permitting new landfills. Other commissioners, Beverly Hall, Bob Walden, and Alvin Evans, told the audience that they could count on them for their support. In other news from last night's workshop, 3rd District Commissioner Rusty Oreck who voted against adopting the Jackson Law last month, asked that the county once again open discussions with the Clear Fork Utility District about extending public water lines into the Westburn area. Finance Director Jeff Marlowe explained that the OSM grant that was available would have covered the cost of constructing the lines, but the utility board declined to take on the project because maintenance of the lines and depreciation would force the existing ratepayers to pay higher costs. Commissioner Terry Singley suggested looking at a larger project that would run the water lines through Morley and include a larger number of new customers. The large crowd slowed dispersed slowly following the workshop, most promising to return next week to watch as commissioners again vote on adopting local control of the landfill permitting process. The regular monthly meeting of the County Commission is next Monday at 6 o'clock at the Courthouse in Jacksboro. WLAF News will be there to bring you the story. At the Monday evening Caravel Mayor and Alderman meeting, Mayor Chris Stanley announced that around 250 jobs would be coming to Caravel this fall. That's after a body armor manufacturer from Indiana opens up in the old PACA building. The mayor calls it a big catch. Stanley goes on to say that the company has already signed the lease on the building 
and hopes to be in business by next month. In other news, the Board of Aldermen held a second reading of an ordinance which amended the annual operating budget for fiscal year 2013 to 2012 and the first reading of an ordinance amending the budget for the fiscal year 2013 and 2014. Mayor Stanley announced that the city of Caraville hosts Drunk or Treat at the Cade Sexton ball field. That will be Halloween night from 5 to 7. There's still no date set for rescheduling a special call meeting of the City of La Follette Mayor and Council. That meeting was scheduled for earlier this afternoon to address the 16 grievances filed against City Administrator Billy Russell. Mayor Mike Stanfield tells WLAF that the meeting is postponed until further notice. Russell tells WLAF that she has retained the services of La Follette attorney Dave Dunaway and to direct all questions where she's concerned to Mr. Dunaway. And we leave you this evening with a story from Food City. A new Miss Food City is crowned over the weekend. At the Paramount Center at Bristol is where 21-year-old Kayla Niekirk of Watoga, Tennessee was crowned Miss Food City on Saturday night. Miss Food City represents Food City during its sponsorship of the NASCAR races at Bristol Motor Speedway as well as other company related activities throughout 2014. Our local news continues on WLAF. We'll be right back with a press release from the Sheriff's Department. And it looks like we have five people booked in to the Campbell County Jail in the past 24 hours. Thomas Barnes, age 27 of Jellicoe, for violation of probation, possession of a Schedule IV controlled substance, and possession of drug paraphernalia. 35-year-old Stephen Homer Dopel of Newcomb, charged with driving while suspended, violation of the registration law, and violation of the Tennessee financial law. Sunshine Nicole Gray, 34, of South Indiana Avenue in La Follette, for public intoxication. 29-year-old Tommy Roy Higgins of North Davis Road in La Follette, for driving while suspended and violation of the Tennessee financial law. And our fifth and final name today, Christopher Brian Perkins, 31 of Newcomb, on a KPS bench warrant. And that is a look at the news and the press release. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to join us again tomorrow. We'll be back here with the midweek edition of the news for you. Hey, Big Josh with you once again on this Tuesday evening looking at our birthdays and anniversaries. Our birthday and anniversary clubs brought to you by your friends here at WLAF and Eastside Pizza and Deli. Today's birthdays, Karen Hansen is celebrating. Happy birthday to you, Karen. Wayne Bird's having a birthday today. Happy birthday to you, Wayne. And Daniel Freeman celebrates today. Happy birthday, Daniel. Chester Cross is celebrating today. Happy birthday, Chester. And Caitlin Ford is 17 years old today. Happy birthday to you, Caitlin. Kenneth McCormick celebrates today. Happy birthday, Kenneth. And Ned Smitty is having a birthday today. Happy birthday, Ned. And yesterday, Daniel L. Campbell turned 28 years old. We hope uh, all of you are had or are having a good day. And our anniversaries today, Benny and Jean Morgan celebrate 28 years. Happy anniversary to Jean and Benny. And Steve and Connie Renneman are celebrating 42 years today. Happy anniversary, Connie and Steve. We hope all of you are just having a super day. Now, if you're celebrating your birthday today or your anniversary, and for some reason we don't have your name on our list, you need to get it in here because that's the only way you can qualify to win a birthday dinner for two or an anniversary dinner for two from your friends here at WLAF and Eastside Pizza and Deli. They're located in the Food Line Center. Hey, I got to go. See you tomorrow, good Lord willing.